Today, the title of my message is True Faith Works. Let me say that one more time. I got one hallelujah. True faith works. And uh, so we're going to be talking about this because, you know, you might say, well, what kind of faith isn't true? Or, or you know, uh, there's just a lot of questions that might come to mind. But I, I just really feel like the Lord is wanting us to really grab a hold um, in this season of true faith. Um, you know, faith and doubt do not walk together. And, you know, there's nothing further than faith and doubt from each other, right? And so uh, I was talking to you just a minute ago about Leviticus 26. And I, and I want you, to, I'm, I'm going to read it uh, out of the Amplified because after I had already read it in my Bible, that's seen some years, <laughs> I might have to, this is one of the things I might have to put away the old and get the new, but I just love this. I know I have a new one my wife blessed me with, but I just love this one. Have you ever been just kind of like attached to something? I think uh, I've, I've taped this up and fixed it. I don't know how many times, but, but anyway, um, but Le- Leviticus 26, verse 9 and 10, if we can kind of go to that, because I really want to encourage you today that God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of our lives. We have one gentleman that's uh, getting married. Man, there's great times ahead of you, buddy. So, you know, and, and, and it's like, there's things that God orchestrates in our lives to bless us, to encourage us, to lift us up, to strengthen us. But also, as we spend time with him, it's, it's in prayer and just, in, in, in just spending time with him, our faith begins to develop and grow. Amen? So uh, this was a word that gave me, uh, just, in, just helped me because I was struggling through Leviticus and going through it. And I says, oh, Lord, some of this stuff, right? And uh, I know it's, uh, you're teaching us stuff, but this word just jumped off the, off the page. And it says, for I will turn towards you uh, with favor and regard and make you fruitful and multiply you. And I will establish and confirm my covenant with you. Woo! That's a powerful, powerful word in itself. And I think about how our covenant God is going to um, reconfirm uh, and establish his covenant with us. And, and then it goes on to say, you will eat the old supply of abundant produce and clear out the old to make room for the new. That is something we can chew on for a while. Because I don't know about you, but we can take that and, yeah, come on. We can take that in many, many ways. You know, we can, th- seriously, we can uh, look at this. You know, the word is so rich that we can look at this literally, and that's great. But how about symbolically or spiritually? I think about how sometimes we need to, um, to grab a hold of, as he's teaching us and he's sharing with us his word and his promises, that we've got to be able to maybe, maybe it's time to get rid of the old way of thinking. Maybe it's time to get rid of the old thoughts that you've been storing up about worry and fear and, and you know, anger and, and just uh, frustration of the last two years that we've been going through. All the things that's, that, that's been going on, maybe the, uh, the, the wrongs that have, you have experienced in your life. Whatever that is that's keeping you away from true faith, uh, the promises of God over you. I really believe that we have to remove and clean out the old to get ready for the new. And I know that there's a lot of good things that we can um, eat from our past, right? I, I got great memories. I got so many memories of being with my beautiful bride and things that the Lord has done and, and with my kids and my 19 grandkids. And you start to look at all the different things that God has done on our behalf. We got a lot to be thankful for, don't we? And, uh, and, you know, so I, I think about this and I, I think about there's, a, there's something that we have to see, but there's also a different way that we can look to this world and we can do it prayerfully. Prayerfully. Start to pray and start to declare with faith declarations this word that, Lord, I'm going to eat from the abundance of the things that you have already done in my life. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make way for the new things that you want to bless me with. The new increase. 
the new favor. You know, the challenge is that, that we want to hold on to the old in this season. And sometimes if you don't let go of the old, you can't grab a hold of the new. It's just out of your reach. And it's not because, because God put it out of your reach. It's because you just won't let go of that old thing that's keeping you down and keeping you in, 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 stuck where you're at. God does not want you to stay stuck. God wants you to be set free. God wants you to see that he's got more for you and me. God wants us to, to recognize and realize that it's in this season, if we let go of the old junk, we can grab a hold of the new blessings that he has for us. And I really believe that not only does God have great blessings for us, but he's got a plan and a purpose for each and every one of our lives. Sometimes we just, it's a sacrifice to give up those old ways and those old thoughts. You know, you just get accustomed to carrying them along, carrying that baggage, even though it's been weighing you down for years. You just go along in the next season of your life, and you're toting around this heavy bag that you know you dealt with. It is kind of a testimony of the things that you've gone through, but can I tell you something? Sometimes you've got to let it go and grab a hold of the new. Amen? So choose your sacrifice uh, uh, to do the hard things that are, are going to bless someone else is what I want to talk to you for a minute about. As we choose the hard things um, that we sacrifice in our lives so that we can bless others. And can I tell you something? That will help us to launch ourselves in to being faithful to the 11th commandment. Did you all know there was 11th commandment? You all didn't know there was 11th commandment? Well, let me share the word of God with you and bring you into the truth. Because we know that, um, that Moses came down with the Ten Commandments, but how many people know that Jesus is God? Jesus, in John 15, 12, says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. In the beginning, there was the Word, and the Word was with God and was God. John 1, Right? And 114, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Friends, if God gives a commandment, guarantee you it's a commandment. And that's his word. That's his truth. It's infallible. So it might not be the most popular commandment, but I can tell you something. It's so valuable. And I really believe that as we start to prepare ourselves not to be self-centered, but to be God-centered. And how many people know that God is a giving God? God wants to bless all of us. And he has sacrificed a lot to get us into a position that we can be blessed. Isn't that true? So it's, the key is, is to love well. Because faith cultivates one seed at a time. But big things happen with little bites. So in other words, we can take little seeds and plant them and if we water them and if we we pray over them and if we do the things that God has called us to do then that little seed is going to grow into big things and then it's going to produce more fruitfulness see we can't look at things at face value you just never know even when you're at the uh say at the restaurant after church today if some of you're going if you take a moment and you just bless a waitress or a waiter or someone else and just give them a word of encouragement or ask God, give me a word for someone today. Let me, I want to bless somebody today. And then be obedient to give it in love. I tell you what, you just don't know that what that seed's going to produce in their lives. Amen? So, and I, I want to just tell you that it, 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 in John 15, 7, it says, If you abide in me and my word abides in you, then you can ask anything you desire and it shall be done. Woo! That's the promise of God that's so powerful, but it takes that abiding, it takes that remaining, us to remain in the Lord, right? And allow him to remain in each one of us. How many people have desires in this room? 
Oh, I'm so glad that most of you raised your hands. And the rest of you I will pray for. That God will give you desires, godly desires. He will increase your vision for 2022. Let me tell you something. When you got a vision, write it down. Write it down. Pray over it. Bathe it in prayer. And allow true faith to grab a hold of it and declare it because you know that you know that you know that God is more than able to do exceedingly above all that we can hope or even imagine. Amen? Turn your Bibles to Romans 8, 27, and we're going to get started right there while we've already started, but I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, I just ask that, Lord, you open up each and every one of our hearts to receive from you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for your word, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that, that as, as we share the word of God today, that we will not only grab a hold of it, but we will apply it to our lives. That, Lord, that we will, it will increase our faith, our trust, and our hope for the things that you do are greater than the things that we could even hope for. So, Lord, we love you and we praise you, and I ask you bless each and every person that's here and everyone that's watching online. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said. Amen and amen. So, Romans 8, 27 says this, And the Father who knows all hearts know what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. So the Holy Spirit is pleading with us in harmony for God's will. And we know that God causes everything, say everything, to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Not for others, for them. See, so we can own that. Each and every one of us said, God's got a plan and a purpose for my life. And it's not to harm me, but to give me a future and a hope. This is a thing that we got to grab. Oh, we can't say, what are we going to do? There's a whole nother a variant or whatever of a virus that's supposed to be coming. Well, just rebuke it in Jesus' name. Don't allow fear to come. Perfect love cast out all fear. And he's got mad perfect love for each and every one of us. Amen? There's a cry in the heart for identity and a cry for purpose. And everything we do is revealed is to reveal the love of the Father. We have to understand that the love of the Father has to be so vital and so ingrained in each and every one of us if we're to have true faith. Because faith um, uh, can waver. Faith can get a little bit uh, weak-kneed and and, and shaky, if you will. But true faith will get us to where we need to be and where we need to go. And God loves us too much to leave us where we're at. Amen. Amen. See, we don't have to earn what we already have. Today, I want to just encourage you that as we approach Christmas celebration and the birth of Jesus Christ, that we have to, uh, we have to understand that, that, that Israel knew about God, right? But God has a desire for relationship with you and me. He's not only a covenant God, but he's a relational God. And he desires, but see, Israel thought, you know, might have thought, well, is he the harsh taskmaster when, when, they, when, they, were, when they were slaves in Egypt? Or, or is he the cruel chess player that, that goes around and, and you know, and, and does things, but things happen to us and it's his fault? Or, or maybe they might be thinking that, that uh, oh, uh, you know, he's the absentee landlord because he's never here when you need him. <laughs> you know, when the pipe busts, he's never around, you know? I mean, you know, I, there's just so many ways, but really the truth is, is that God is perfect in all of his ways, and his love is perfect, and he is love. So we have to, um, God, I, I think about how Jesus was, was willing to leave his glory and his uh, uh, divinity and his just mag- majestic beauty and, and greatness in heaven to be incarnated in, in man as a baby being born in a very humble place, in a manger, in a stable, because there was no room at the inn. See, he didn't come with wanting accolades and having a big procession and, and all the things that people might want. But instead, he humbled himself 
And he came and he went through all the things that we have gone through and more so that he can be uh, understanding and sympathetic and good high priest on our behalf. Amen? And not only that, he could also help us to, re, um, to relate to who God is, to his very nature, to his very character, to, to everything that he is. Think about this. He's, Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Isn't that awesome? Anyway. God has a purpose and a plan, and God wants each and every one of us to see Jesus so that we know who God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is, and the love that they have for us, and the design that their plan is not not at all to harm us, but to set us free, to deliver us. Amen? Yeah. See, so the Old Testament, they knew that that God was a God that if they cried out to him, he would hear them. And then he would bless them. And then he would empower them. And then they would have victories. But then what would they do after they got blessed? Turn back to their old ways. And there's this vicious cycle that just kept coming and coming and coming. But Jesus says, I want that cycle to stop. He wants us to stop with us. He wants us to stand for for, for, for what he has called us to do and what he's, who he's called us to be. So true faith works, is, as, a, as the title says, it works. Because when we have true faith, let me tell you something, there's something that's, uh, uh, it's just like we just shared, that when you make a faith declaration, <clears throat> as you hear from the Lord, then all of a sudden there's authority and a power that's connected to it to achieve everything it was sent to do. How many people know that we've all been given a measure of faith, a seed of faith? That's one of the free gifts that God has given each and every one of us. But how many people also know it's up to us to grow that faith? And so as we, it's kind of like a muscle. If you don't use it, man, it doesn't grow. So the more we seek God and the more we line ourselves up in our actions and our words and, and the more we do things, then, then God is not only going to hear us, but he's going to give us an opportunity to, to increase our faith because we agreed with what he has for each and every one of us. God is building your faith through relationships with him, though. As we pray, as we, inter- as we intercede on behalf of others, as we get into his word, as we worship and praise him, as we come together, can I tell you something? There's a lot of people that still haven't come back yet. And if that's you, if, you got a, if you're sick in body or there's fear of, or concern that you have because of your health, then that's, that's one thing. But if, if we're just trying to get comfortable and if we're just trying to stay at home to worship God, then we have it, we've missed what he said in his word. Do not forsake the assembly of, of the brethren, because one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. How many people know there's a battle that's raging in the spirit, and we've got to engage in it, and we've got to come together. And Jesus wants to have fellowship, not only with you, but he wants us to have fellowship together with him. But prayer opens up the heavens and brings the Holy Spirit. Say that again. Prayer opens up the heavens and brings the Holy Spirit. Well, wait a minute. How do you know that? Where do you get that at? Well, when Jesus got baptized, he prayed. And the heavens were opened. And the Holy Spirit came down as a dove. And as the Holy Spirit landed on Jesus, it remained. Can I tell you something, friends? We want to grab a hold of this. So when we activate our faith by praying, I, you know, and, and, and all these type of things, it's, it's so important. I, I'm reminded of um, my youngest daughter. She was pregnant with baby Luna. And um, I, I just remember that when she was pregnant with baby Luna, the doctor said that, you know, you should abort that baby because she's got two holes in her heart. She's going to, if she lives then she's going to have to have um, multiple surgeries in the first year, and she probably won't live past a year. So don't put yourself through that. Well, you know, we're people of faith, right? God is bigger than a couple holes in the heart. Right? No, seriously. I mean, and so, but we have to activate our faith, and we have to not just say we have faith, but we have to have true faith. We have to activate it. 
We have to believe. We have to trust. But we have to do something. So what did we do? We began to pray. Right, baby? And not only did we pray, we asked others to pray. And then, hey, it got a little closer. We started to fast. And, of course, my daughter says, I'm not letting go of my baby. And can I tell you something? Baby Luna was born a little over two years ago, and she's perfectly, beautifully healthy. She's the joy of our life. I'm telling you, this is something that we've got to grab a hold of because science or the doctors can say one report, but guess what? God's got another. Amen? Come on, friends. So... We can't, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta pray. And yes, were those tra- challenging times? And just if I, if I can be transparent, my wife and I, and, and I'm sure Jesse and, and Danny uh, and others, man, it brought a little bit of anxiousness from us. So what did we do? We did what, what we always preach here, Philippians 4, 6. We'd be anxious for nothing, but through all things, through prayer and supplication, we made our, our requests be made known to God with thanksgiving, believing that he was going to answer our prayers. And then the peace of God came upon us. Supplication is meaning fervent prayer. Fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, the Bible says. Supplication is what it means. Don't just pray one time and that's it. You keep praying until it's done. Can I tell you something? We were praying until after that baby was born. And then we were praying that whole first year. And I'm still praying for my kids and grandkids. Why? Because that's what we're to do. And besides that, I love spending time with Daddy. Faith without works is not only dead, but faith expresses itself through works. So through your actions, your faith-based actions, it expresses your faith. But if you don't act on your faith, then how are you ever going to grow your faith? There are many that say that, that... they have faith to believe in Jesus is the Lord. But every time there's a challenge or something comes along, for some reason they don't believe in his promises. Having, to, uh, having faith to believe in some of his promises is not only something that, that we have to hold on to, but listen, if you say you have faith, but you don't stand on his promises over your life, then I would challenge you to re we look at that and see if you have true faith. But if you're one of those people that have faced things in your life, and even though they go against the word of God and the promises over your life, and, and, you, and you just didn't have the right amount of faith to believe at that time, well, let me just tell you something. You're in good company. So turn your Bibles to Luke 24, verse 9. And I'm going to share with you some things that I want you to see because it's really unbelievable to me. When I was in this, this this is where I was in the New Testament. As I was telling you, I was sharing, and I'm getting both of these in the same week. It's so powerful. God is so good. Okay, Luke 24, 9, it says, uh, this was after the crucifixion, right? And how many times, how many people know that Jesus shared with his disciples to prepare them ahead of time that he would have to go to Jerusalem, suffer many things uh, uh, from the religious leaders, and that he would not only uh, go through those things, but he would be crucified, but on the third day he would rise again. How many times? How many times? I mean, people know that, right? So here we are, after his crucifixion, then they returned from the tomb, Jesus' tomb, and told all these things to the eleven to all, and, and, and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. These are the ones that walked with Jesus. These are the 11 that, that, that not only followed Jesus and walked with him, ate with him, uh, seen all of his miracles, heard his words, right? These are the ones. And, and I'm thinking about, and they didn't believe. So if there's been times that you didn't believe, don't beat yourself up too much. These disciples of Jesus, now that who became his apostles, who changed the world... Did not believe. Mark 16, 9 
says this, Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Uh, He appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him, and they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, what does your Bible say? They did not believe. They did not believe. Have you ever, Rose, you ever had something just jump off the page? You say, Lord, how could they not have believed? You know, when he asked, who do you say I am? Peter said, hey, you are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. He gave them that revelation that he had. But that wasn't, but apparently they didn't have true faith. Say true faith at this time. And after that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest. But they did not believe them either. John 20, 1, uh, verse 1, it says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, say early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran. I love that. I love that. Man, that stirred her heart up. Oh, she said, oh no, she ran. Maybe I, I'm going to see my, my Lord. Or, you know, she ran. And came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and and we do not know where they have laid him. And Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple, say other disciple, and, uh, and were going to the tomb, so they both ran together. And the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then, then, <clears throat> excuse me, then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen clothes lying there. And he saw the linen clothes lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but he folded but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who came to the tomb first, went in also, and he saw and believed. One out of 11 believed. Wow. And my thought is, why did John, the beloved, believe when the others did not? What did he have in his heart that maybe the others did not? They all were told the same thing. He encouraged them over and over and over again. But can I tell you something? John the Beloved knew he was loved. Friends, I want to tell you, you have to know that you're loved by God have true faith to truly believe and I'm thinking and I was praying about this and I'm thinking about this and and I thought that that John was able to have true faith because he knew and matter of fact it says six or seven times that Jesus the one that Jesus loved but you know he couldn't lie because it was all scripture is inspired by God So it's truth. But see, he recognized that Jesus loved him. And he believed. You know, I think about how Peter, Jesus asked Peter later, he says, you know, do you love me, Peter? Three times. You know, when God asks us something, it's not because he doesn't know. But he wants us to know. I think about how Forty days, Jesus had to stay around for 40 days so that he could help the disciples have true faith. I really believe this is a word for all of us today. It's time to have true faith. In the midst of all the things we're going through, in the midst of everything that we're facing, uh, all the craziness that's out there, 
It's time for us to say, you know what, Lord, I know you love me. And your promises for me, I've got to hold on to better. I've got to believe. I think about how God loved Peter so much. Matter of fact, in one of the, one of the gospels, he said that go tell Peter and the others. Because he knew that Peter said, I'll never deny you. But he did three times. And he knew that Peter needed to know how much he loved him. How perfect his love was for him. That's why the last thing he commissioned his disciples to do. You know what that was? What was the last thing that he told his disciples to do? Anybody know? Yeah, that's, that's, usually, the, 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 that's usually what we, um, everyone believes, and that's one of the things is to go, therefore. But it's actually to stay and wait for the power to come upon you from on high. Because if we don't go out in power, friends, we're not going to accomplish much. We have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We have to, they, he knew that they had to have true faith so that when they would wait for the Holy Spirit, as they would come together in unity, in one accord, for they didn't know how long, but for 10 days, the 120 came together. And because they were praying and because they were worshiping, because they were spending time with God and each other, that the Holy Spirit came and fought fell afresh on each and every one of them. And the whole world was changed. Think about that. 120, full of the power of God, full of faith, were willing to go out. Every disciple, except for John, died a martyr's death. They tried to kill John though, right, Rose? They put him in the middle of an arena, I think, and, and put him in boiling oil, and he would just keep preaching. Just kept preaching to him. So they took him out, and they sent him out to the island of Pathmos, where he was able to write the book of Revelations. i got to tell you something, friends. God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of our lives. And he does not want us to stay in a place where we're not truly, uh, or do, where we don't have true faith. Faith to believe that God has got plans in the midst of the enemy's plot for our lives. Can we all stand?